beautifully dramatic. The cruelest, savage exhibition of nature at her worst without, and we three. We elegant three within. I should like to think that an irate Jehovah was pointing those arrows of lightning directly at my head, the unbowed head of George Gordon, Lord Byron, England's greatest sinner. But I cannot flatter myself to that extent. Possibly those thunders of our dear Shelley. Heaven's applause for England's greatest poet. What of my Mary? She is an angel. You think so? You hear? Come, Mary. Come and watch the storm. You know how lightning alarms me. Shelley, darling, will you please light these candles for me? <laughs> oh, Mary, darling. Astonishing creature. I Lord Byron. Frightened of thunder, fearful of the dark. And yet you have written a tale that sent my blood into icy creeps. <laughs> Look at her, Shelley. Can you believe that bland and lovely brow conceived of Frankenstein? A monster created from cadavers out of rifled graves? Isn't it astonishing? I don't know why you should think so. What do you expect? Such an audience needs something stronger than a pretty little love story. So why shouldn't I write of monsters? No wonder Murray's refused to publish the book. He says his reading public would be too shocked. It will be published, I think. Then, darling, you will have much to answer for. The publishers did not see that my purpose was to write a moral lesson of the punishment that befell a mortal man who dared to emulate God. Well, whatever your purpose may have been, my dear, I take great relish in savoring each separate horror. I roll them over on my tongue. Don't, Lord Byron. Don't remind me of it tonight. What a sitting in that churchyard to begin with. The sobbing women. <laughs> The first clod of earth on the coffin. That was a pretty chill. Frankenstein and the dwarf stealing the body out of its new-made grave. Cutting the hanged man down from the gallows where he swung creaking in the wind. The cunning of Frankenstein in his mountain laboratory. Taking dead men apart and building up a human monster. So fearful, so horrible, that only a half-crazed brain could have devised. And then the murder. Oh. The little child drowned. Henry Frankenstein himself thrown from the top of the burning mill by the very monster he had created. And it was these fragile white fingers that penned the nightmare. Oh, you made me prick myself, Byron. She's bleeding. There, there. I do think it a shame, Mary, to end your story quite so suddenly. That wasn't the end at all. Would you like to hear what happened after that? I feel like telling it. It's a perfect night for mystery and horror. The air itself is filled with monsters. I'm all ears. While heaven blasts the night without, open up your pits of hell. Well then, imagine yourself standing by the wreckage of the mill. The fire is dying down. Soon the bare skeleton of the building will be visible. The gaunt rafters against the sky.